Kaminar by Skyla Brown. A note to the reader. In 1954, the democratically elected government of Guatemala was overthrown by a group of military men who were unhappy with the way government had been passing laws to help poor farmers and rural communities. Forty horrible years followed in which the people of Guatemala tried to resist, organize, and bring about change all while the Guatemalan army did everything they could to discourage the rebels, or guerrillas, as they called the organizers. The army went into the mountains of rural Guatemala, where they tried to prevent villagers from joining the rebels. Many lives were lost, and many more were never the same. Chopin, Guatemala, 1981. Where I'm from. Our mountain stood tall like the finger that points. Our corn plants grew in fields, thick and wide as a thumb. Our village sat in the folded between in that spot where you pinch something sacred to keep it still. Our mountain stood guard at our backs. We slept at night in its bed. Azakchil. Mama called me Azakchil round face of an owl, quiet moon face stretched so wide all filled up with the eyes, head that swiveled side to side, moving just to see, silent when the day bird sang, I sat away from all. Not yet. I was strong enough to break the wood into small pieces and feed our fire. I kept our stove top warm but Mama would not send me out to cut a tree. Not yet, she said, and put away the blade. I was old enough to feed the chickens, gather eggs by myself. I watched out from them all. But Mama would not let me wring their necks. Not yet, she said, and wiped her brow, feathers stuck to her arm with blood. soccer. I did not have to be big, just strong enough to make a wall with my body, keep everyone away from the ball at my feet. Then I could move, tap it from one foot to the next, go down the field and never lose the ball. I could move the ball safely, closer to the goal, close enough to score, but I was too afraid it would be taken before it reached the goal. So I passed instead. Even though Mateo's shot didn't make it, I sighed with relief because my pass did. Almost dark. When I felt my eyes start to pinch, trying to see the ball, I knew Mama wanted me home. I have to go, lo siento amigos. Without me, the teams were unbalanced. So I heard my friends complain. Don't go, cinco minutos mas. Not now, why? Mateo answered before I could. Leave Carlos alone, it is his bedtime. You know he is afraid of the dark. Roberto tried to catch my eye, but I looked away. My cheeks burned, my neck itched. I tucked my chin down into my chest. My shoulders pointed toward my feet, which pointed to home. Roberto. Roberto had a brother, David, who was old enough to pick the cherry coffee fruits, hold a girl's hand on his way to church, smoke a cigarette behind the tienda, and old enough to have a military knock on his door with signing papers. Roberto had a father, Manuel, who was drunk enough to yell at the officers who knocked on his door, hunting for soldiers' sons, and then after that, Roberto and his mother lit a candle in the church for the son, the soldier's son, David, now with a gun. Roberto and his mother lit a candle in the church for the father, Roberto's father, Manuel, who was gone. Soldiers set up camp. 
That year, before the rains began, they came in jeeps with tents for sleep. Setup came outside our village. I said, there are so many of them. How will they all fit inside those tents? Tia Rosa said, they brought more bullets than corn. Roberto's mother said, they have no right to be here. We have done nothing wrong. Santiago said, they are not here for us. Their prey is in the jungle. They are hunters. Mama said, they are boys, men far away from home with nothing good to eat. She would not let me take the breads she sent to them. Did not want me to get close. Close. One night, three of them came to our soccer field, watched a bit, then joined in. They were not that bad. When the game was over, they passed out sodas, asked if anyone wanted a job. The big one, with a laugh that wheezed like a teasing balloon, said, Just bring me the names of any communist you know. All we want are names. I did not know what a communist was. Never heard the word before said in our village. Did not know what it meant. Did not understand. But the 400 quetzales they offered? Enough to feed a person for a month or buy a radio and San Fernando. I looked at the faces of my friends and knew that was something we all understood. The Army. The soldiers stayed for days at the foot of our mountain. They ate tortillas, played soccer, listened to music just like us. But they were always searching, always watching, always serious, warning us about guerrillas, warning us about those rebel communists, warning us to keep them away. They even let a few boys shoot their guns. We were not scared. But then, the day before the army broke up camp and left, some women who were washing clothes came running back to town, screaming. Roberto and I walked toward the water to see what made them run. It was a man, Juan Choctuk, dangling from a tree. A sign was hung from the rope around his neck. Communist. I heard the soldiers packing up their things, laughing. Para que escarmienten? They will learn a lesson. I watched some men from my village come cut the rope and lower his body. Stiff, carry it back to town. I heard them talking about Juan Choke Tuk. They were not calling him a communist. Instead, they spoke of land he owned, land others wanted, land no one could afford unless they earned a few quetzales, selling names to the army. Later that night, the soldiers called us all into the middle of the village. I could still see that stiff body in my mind, and so I did not want to go. Mama said, Come, mijo. It is best if we just see what it is they want. But all they wanted was a chance to stand high on the steps, grip their guns tight to their chests, watch us all wait to hear their words. They were passing out food, sodas, just a few things they did not want to bother hauling away the next day, even though we were all forced to come. There were not enough sweets to go around. The big one with the balloon laugh said, Remember, there are traitors in this village, people who are spies for the rebels, snakes who want to carry harm into Chopin. When we come back, we will pay money for these names, reward those who do their part to keep this village safe from the terrorists who want to tear it all apart. He was not laughing his wheezy laugh. He reminded us there was a war going on. They were working hard to find and kill the enemy, keep us safe. Remember, he said, these men are rebels, stupid, smelly pigs. He spat. They are gorillas. Ugly, clumsy things. He spat. They are communists who will come steal your food, 
hurt your women, take your children. They cannot be trusted. Offer them no help. You must defend your village. I wondered how many soldiers these rebels must have killed to make the army hate them so. On the way home, the army said the communists were bad, evil wanting to take away the land that people owned. I did not know anyone who owned any land, so I was not worried. Santiago on his way to his stool by the corn said, land does not belong to anyone. The next morning, we watched them leave, shaking their heads from side to side, jeeps bouncing on the road, dust flying up behind. Some people worried, didn't want them to go, felt unsafe. Some people sighed, didn't want them to stay, felt unsafe. I was not sure why they were leaving. Without the rebels, they said they came to find. Mateo's brother said, we must be ready to fight the rebels. Roberto's mother said, it is the army we should fight. Battle them if they come again, Santiago said. It is not war. Roberto was looking down, not making a sound. Mateo was nodding his head up and down, up and down. It is up to us to keep our village safe. He turned to Roberto, then frowned, said, It is time to be a man. Roberto said, Nothing. I nodded, said, keep our village safe. The oldest of Floro's brothers laughed and said, the troubles of our nations solved by a bunch of schoolboys. Flora. Flora lived in my village, climbed trees with me when her father wasn't looking, showed me the spot in her grandmother's garden where she buried a puppy one year. Flora lived with her family, mother, father, three sisters, four brothers, two grandmothers, and an uncle, all under the same roof, always loud, always busy, never enough food. Sometimes when Mama and I finished our meal at the table with two chairs, I would wrap some beans into a tortilla, tuck it into my pocket, walk to Flora's house, watch her eat on the steps, lick her fingers, laugh at me as I tried to pluck a feather from Senor Pancho, the rooster, her feathers wrapped around the edge of the tortilla, her teeth peeking out, her mouth in a smile. Healer. Flora's grandmother had a garden behind her house, full of plants growing as food and full of plants growing to heal. But the most important plants she gathered from the jungle, teaching Flora to look for leaves pointed, berries yellow, roots moist, Flora and her sisters and their mother would chop and wash, mash and boil while her grandmother looked on, looked over as they made the healing paste, making sure they got each mixture just right, making sure there would always be a healer in that house, mending, helping, listening to the pains of the whole town. In the fields. The day after the soldiers left, I did not go to school. I went to work instead with Mateo and his uncles in the coffee fields, where berries fat and red waited inside the bushes to be picked. I ran my fingers down the stem, pulled them toward me with a crackle. My hands were fast, squeezing life from each bush, squeezing out the promise of tomorrow, red sweet hope ready to be plucked, red juicy life ready to fill the basket at my waist. My hands moved fast down each stem. Crackle, crackle, crackle. Like climbing a rope, except I was not going anywhere. Being a man, when my work was done, I took the long path home looking for Flora to show her the money I earned for a day of being a man. I could not find her near the corn where Santiago was sitting, keeping away hungry animals. I did not find Mama there looking for me. Carlos, donde anda bas? Where have you been? Luisa tells me you did not go to school. 
School is for children, Mama. Today I am a man. I dug into my pocket, pulled out money from inside, put each centavo in, my, in her hand. Mama shut her eyes tight, shut her mouth tight, shut her fist around the money tight, tight, tight. You are too young, mijo, to work in fields all day. I moved my eyes to Santiago's tool, stool where he sat saying nothing. I am old enough, I said. Mama sighed, shook her head, told me to come home soon, then walked away. I smiled because she kept the money in her hands, money to buy food, money that I earned myself. Nahueles, Santiago's voice called out to me, worn and warm and old. I was your age when I stepped away from child, stepped into a man. I looked over at him then. He took his cane and pointed up the mountainside. In the woods, I met my Nahua, became a man. I looked up to the trees, away from his eyes. I did not want to tell him. No one believes anymore in Nahuales, spirit animals who guide us in life, keep us safe. I walked away, but I wondered which animal he saw. <laughs>